What is going on everyone? It's Keebs and we are going to be doing our weekly Apex Arena replays and it's going to be an interesting one. Um, I lost most of my matches. I lost three out of five in my qualifiers. So this is just going to be my qualifiers. I am not planning to play any more Apex until next weekend. But I am planning to start already making my push for Langrisser next weekend because I want to get experience playing against the more, um, what is it, the, the more experienced players because I think that they're more active in the earlier weeks just because some of them get lazy later on in the season and start kind of just not playing too much in Apex and it makes it easier for you to push into Langrisser so you get into the playoffs and you're not really too well equipped. So this coming weekend and probably the weekends after, Assuming that I do have the time, I am planning to start pushing for Langrisser already. But for this weekend, I'm just going to stop at Gold 3. And I'll probably be streaming next weekend uh, moving forward. So we got five battles here. Um, the two that I win, I don't really deserve the wins on. I probably, or maybe one of them I deserve the win. But the, the last one, the second one I guess, because there's only two of them. But the second win... I don't really think that I deserve the win because my opponent was not running a level 10 soldier on the most important member of his team who probably would have won him that fight. So yeah, let's jump into it and let's uh, get this thing started. So jump into the battle report. We're going to start here with Ozumitsu and this match here was my first match of the day. Um, I got really kind of distracted in this match. I'm not making any excuses. I I made bad calls, so I, I got a little bit distracted. They sent me a message on Discord as we were starting the match, and I saw the ping. They said to take it easy on them or something. And uh, I started switching between Discord and Langrisser, and kind of, I was just having trouble focusing a little bit. But my lack of focus was really, it wouldn't have made a difference because I played this one poorly. Because the one match, or the one move that I make that loses me this fight was all me. It didn't have anything to do with me being distracted. So you can see here somehow I managed to ban them out of having a tank and they gave me juggler and illustri on this map. So right off the bat I'm gonna go for the easy kill on their Listel here and we do manage to get it thanks to moving five blocks and attacking with um, bone dinos as well as um, what are they called? As well as attack blessing Yusuke now has his buff up, and since they're running a pro tag buff, he's able to transform really early. Um, yeah, them them getting Sakura here was a big mistake on my part. Not really them getting Sakura, but you'll see here the mistake here of Sakura is going to be the one who wins this fight for them because I play this one pretty badly. So right off the bat, we have D-Heart right up in the front, and this is where I make my, my mistake is here I'm going to attack with D-Heart on their Sakura from here because I wanted to get the attack boost from Unicorns for attacking on top of Grasslands, but I didn't realize this was Path. Thanks game for having indistinguishable terrain. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. The, the game just didn't really make this really clear that this was Path, and I probably should have double checked before I made the mistake, but I'm gonna attack from here and with my D heart using onrush and because she has higher skill she gets the first move which killed off all of my soldiers here and my D heart on his own didn't have the damage to punch through both the zealots and their sakura so I basically do nothing meaningful there and that was my mistake is I should not have been greedy I already killed off their listel they had no tank all I had to do was make a good trade here of sacrificing my illustriel to kill off their uh, Sakura. If I had just done that, all they would have had here was Matthew and Yusuke. And honestly, with the team that I had here, I was really confident I would have been able to handle those two. But you'll see here I get greedy. It's going to cost me the match because this breeze on Sakura here allows her to hit my Tiaris. My Tiaris now can no longer heal anyone. She can't even heal herself. I kill her too late. I can't even afford to attack Yusuke 
because he is transformed and he has his buff and he can counter from two range now. And well, Tiaris ends up hurting my Illustriel even more. Somehow I managed to survive this attack with a heavy shield proc and some fixed damage, but it doesn't really matter because my damage is, or my HP is low, and all of my healers are heal reversed, and I can't afford to really escape this. So, Matthew's gonna get a free kill here on my D heart. And we're down 4 to 3. Not really 4 to 3, because Tiaris here is going to attack my juggler. And since he can't, oh, he can't be healed up, I don't have soldiers to give me damage reduction to survive the, the coming attack here that they're about to drop on me from their team. So in comes Matthew. His sword dance here is actually going to kill off my Illustriel. He gets a crit there. I don't know if the crit was necessary, but it doesn't really matter. I lose the match here. I try to cleanse some debuffs on my juggler. Doesn't really matter again, because they have attack blessing, and juggler dies, and that's the game. So, good game, Ozumitsu. I played that one pretty badly. I think that I probably could have won it if I had just not been greedy and attacked with my Illustriel to kill off Sakura, because then they would have had only one DPS on that turn. I had three tanks, and I just had to stall it out, and they wouldn't have had that critical heal reversal that shut my team down completely. So, um big mistake on my part it's it, this one really the loss here comes down to not really having good target selection so um yeah big loss i had a really great team i completely bricked that one <laughs> so uh our second match here is against ky so this is a pretty cool one because they actually run about the same amount of origins if not more origins heroes in their box than i do so you can see here they're actually running Jessica, uh, Pierre, and Kirikaze in their box, whereas I am not, because I am running this team here. I think that we're actually running about the same amount of Origins. Um, no, I think they're probably running more. Their box is basically all Origins except for Zerida um, and Liana. But either way... I am going to be playing a rushdown team again because this is kind of what I'm trying to get experience with this season is uh, because I got shut down so bad by Maruru when I had a uh, what's it called when I lost my juggler as my first pick I'm trying to get more experience playing a more aggressive team so that at least I'm not completely so unconfident in my ability to play a, an aggressive team that I actually have this option because when I played against Maruru in the playoffs I w I knew that I could have picked first picked D heart but I wasn't confident in my ability to play that team and because I didn't have that confidence you saw what happened I didn't play it and then it cost me the match so that's why I'm trying to play despite whatever the team is that my opponents get I'm trying to play most of my matches if I can with a more aggressive team so that I can get an idea of what the pick ban looks like if I don't, um, if I do play the pick ban this way. So, there's Zerida. I teleport my Luna in because I'm trying to see if I can pressure and, you know, uh, prevent their, their team from pushing forward with this teleport. It's really not going to work out for me because they have a Jessica who I was totally unprepared for, but... We go for the Wind God Realm, and we're going to one-shot their Freya. But I didn't really have a plan to follow up after this. Freya was literally just a tank there to help them to get set up. And after I killed off Freya, uh, I didn't really have a way to come back from this. I really should have used my Luna and moved her up here, so at least I could have been safe from the follow-up teleport from Leonhart. But I really wasn't thinking. I was. I think I was kind of just worried that he was going to um, use Air Slash on me and just stay back here. Which probably would have been better for me. But it doesn't really matter because I make a mistake here. You'll see here, I, tele or I used my Lifany and I used my Summon from here instead of here. I would have been safe from this spot. If I had just stayed right here, tele or summoned my Bomb and then put it right here, I could have accomplished the same thing. I could have blocked this area. Leonhart wouldn't have had the mobility 
to reach all the way into here and hit my Lifany with that AoE. And, well, it was, it was a really stupid move on my part because you'll see here, it's going to cost me so much damage on my Lifany and it's also going to cost me my Luna. So, because of D or Leon Hart using his Emperor's Sword, I am act again blocked and I am running strike on my D heart. So I don't even have the mobility to approach their, their Leon Heart now. And basically their Zerida and their Silver Wolf are going to zone me into a corner. And that's basically the game. There's not really anything else to see from here because I can't there's I don't really do anything at this point. Um I'm just stalling for time. So uh that is the second match. Total shutout once again um, this one was less to my, less because of my own stupidity as much as, uh, I mean, there were a couple stupid moves in there, but it was more that I was very poorly equipped to deal with their team. I probably should have banned out their Freya, but I was banning out high priority DPS, and um, my pick ban phase was really weird because of the DPS that I ended up with. And that's also where I learned that my Lifany is not really compatible with my box for Season 3. I'm running much more of an aggressive pick ban now, and because I'm playing a more aggressive pick ban, Lifany and Young Jessica, honestly, both don't really play too well with this playstyle, because most of the time I'm not going to get juggler. Um, Landius is so out of place because my box is so origins heavy, but I'm most of the time not going to end up with a tank. My only tank option would probably be to run Freya. But Freya comes with her own problems, um, mainly being that she has no DPS outside of her fixed damage. Um, but my Lifany and my young Jessica both are very... I think that they're more meant to be played defensively, right? Lifany doesn't really have the DPS to run a more aggressive playstyle just because... Um, her her DPS isn't great. She's more revolving around using her fixed damage to weaken things so that you can follow up and get the kill on the weakened enemies or use that fixed damage to lower their DPS so that they can't really, you know, their healers are always occupied. Um, whereas the team that I'm playing is always going to be ahead so she can never really get set up to do that. So maybe if I do start picking my Freya, my Lifany will start being a little bit more relevant. But I'm thinking as soon as I get my Hiei to 5 stars, I'm going to immediately replace her. And maybe as soon as I get Kurama to 5 stars, I'll also probably replace her temporarily with him, who is going to end up being replaced by uh, Hiei. So yeah. Um, kind of a little bit of a tangent, but this is our third match. I'm going to win this one. Uh, I really don't think that I deserve to win this one, but you'll you'll see what happens here. I do think I played this one much better than I played the previous ones. So what you'll see here is they are running juggler, and they are going to make one crucial mistake here right in the beginning. So let's start this off. We have my win god realm is set up. And I'm basically just getting ready so that my D-Heart can go in for an attack. And here we go. That's already the mistake. They are using either a Sage Hat or an Yggdrasil Wreath. And for whatever reason, they moved their Tiaras here instead of here to give that buff to Juggler. If they had just put that buff on Juggler, he would have been able to guard here. Because I'm going to use Act again here in a second so that my D-Heart can get an attack on Juggler to disable his guard, since I'm running Thousand Hooves this time. So, this should not have been a win, if they had just made that one different move. So, in comes D-Heart, we're going to go ahead and put a Thousand Hooves down. Not really going to do too much damage, but we do get rid of his water conversion, which would have been more important if they had actually bothered to guard, uh, not guard, but... If they had actually bothered to set up that uh, Yggdrasil Wreath. But they can't guard, so they can't really afford to leave this area. Um, juggler is there doing juggler things. He can't really guard. And I teleported my D-Heart down here. I really should have kept him up here instead, because then I would have been in range to attack Burnheart. But I don't really know what I was thinking, so 
what's going to happen is we're bringing in Landius with Tranquility just to try to stall some turns to see what they want to do. And we move Landius out of the way. We have Gospel on him now because that is going to protect him from the debuffs from Rachel if she decides to drop her 3 cost skill. And also, because they moved Bernhardt forward, now my D-Heart here has a path to go ahead and attack him. So my D-Heart, since he is full cavalry and their Bernhardt is full infantry, is going to have a pretty easy time killing off their Bernhardt with a normal attack. Um, Rachel decides not to go for a move, and, well, we kill off Bernhardt. Elwyn here is going to get the follow-up, uh, but we stun Juggler. Elwyn gets the follow-up, he uses his Sword Soul, and it kills off my D-Heart. But now he leaves this spot open, since my D-Heart just died. I'm going to go ahead and attack Elwyn with the extra defense and magic defense from this tile. I'm assuming that the magic defense also factors into my conversion, because I was not confident I would have gotten that kill. And they run away here, because I have Luna. They weren't confident that their uh, Iris or their Rachel would have been able to kill my Luna through this aura, and then all I had to do was stall it out with all my healers and Landius, and their only DPS was a juggler who doesn't have Great Dragon Barrier to give him the really big stat conversion that he needs to get that instant kill on my Landius. So, yeah, that one was my win. Um, I play this one a little bit better, but I also have a couple issues with the way that I played it. But as far as that one goes, my first win, I'm pretty happy. So let's go into our fourth match here, and this one is disappointing. This is where I learned a really important lesson with my Gerald and Layla, who I've been testing, and is also the first time that you'll get to see my Gerald and Layla's 3-cost skill in action. So let's go ahead and skip the pick ban phase. We have D-Heart, Gerald and Layla, and Luna. And we managed to get Freya also as a late pick. I think she was my fifth pick in this fight. Um, but this is going to be their team. Sakura here, again, is going to cause me problems. I just... Sakura and Yusuke, these two, these pairs together are causing me some problems. Um, I also don't particularly like Rachel, but she is less problematic to me, I think, than the others. But either way, I... The main plan here was to use my Iris's Teleport... Set up my Gerald and Layla for an easy one-shot here on their juggler. And that's it. That was my entire game plan. I didn't have any long game plan to, you know, to, to do anything after this. And that's going to cost me the fight here. Because you'll see that I send in Gerald and Layla. I am going to get the one-shot on their juggler fairly easily. Um, there's the onrush. Get the one shot through Lobster Behemoths in water, and that's it. That was my entire plan. I had nothing else after this, and since they have a Liana, they're going to use Act Again on Rachel to use Dark Reaper to one shot my Gerald and Layla because they are extremely fragile as a hero, um, just because of Bone Dinos having basically no survivability and my cavalry training not having very high survivability either, and. Yeah, after that kill, I had no plan for the rest of this fight. And that, obviously, is going to be a problem. Because they have some... Even though they have no tank, they have some pretty dangerous DPS. And the heal reversal from Sakura here is going to cause me problems. Because, as you'll see here in a second... She gets the clock. <laughs> so that clock basically sealed the deal. Um, but honestly, even without the clock, I don't think it would have been... I don't think it would have even been necessary to get the clock proc. Because after this AoE, my stats were also still so low that I wouldn't have been, been able to make a comeback. But here's my Luna going in for an attack on their Rachel. I get the kill here, and I was not expecting to get the kill. This is, this is where I made a miscalculation. I thought that my Luna would not be able to kill off Rachel 
and that I would be able to kill with my D heart to follow up and then get a stun on someone. But obviously that was a miscalculation on my part. I thought that with the magic defense down, I wouldn't have enough DPS to kill her. Obviously I was wrong because um, despite the damaged soldiers, I still get this kill. And because I couldn't follow up with D-Heart to get that kill, to get the stun, to get the damage reduction from my talent, now I am not equipped at all to engage with Sakura and um, Yusuke. So... Yeah, honestly, another issue here with my team that I had is that I did not use Iris and set up her healing talent on my D-Heart so that I couldn't use Strike to get the heal off of her to be a little bit more safe to attack their team. So that was a huge mistake on my part. Um, but you'll see here, I finally, too late, I send in my Iris, and at the worst possible time, because now I made it even easier for their Sakura to drop the AoE here to heal reverse even my Iris. So now her, her talent heals are killing us. And, well... <laughs> I'm not going to make a comeback from this. Yusuke nearly kills me off. Uh, my Freya's fixed damage from her uh, her gear is really holding up pretty well. But unfortunately, my, my D-Heart is really causing me problems. I really can't wait to switch him back over to his Assassin class because I think that's one class that I'm really missing representation in my box that would really help me out since I almost never get my Zerida, and, well, yeah. <laughs> um, this, this was really sad, is I kill off Liana here, I do manage to put their Yusuke to sleep, but because of the fact that he got the turn after, I couldn't even get an attack with my Luna while he was stunned. So, pretty, pretty massive shutout once again once again due to my own stupidity um, but we're going to jump into our final match here and this one I'm not really too proud of this victory this one is against an Elwyn who is not running level 10 soldiers so if we go ahead and jump into this you can see here I have a major problem I am running full cavalry I should have switched my illustrial over to gargoyles because gargoyles would have allowed me to be neutral to their Elwyn, so I could have probably been able to kill him off. Um, but since I'm running Bone Dinos, I don't have that power that I need. Also, I'm running full cavalry on these two, and again, I'm going to one-shot a juggler. This one is a lot less impressive. Um, you can see here, only 507 defense, so pretty low defensively. I honestly don't know what a high magic defense juggler is, but... Uh, we're going to one-shot him, no problem, but I'm going to really struggle here to kill off Elwyn after I kill off the Juggler. So, uh, I'm running Guardian Infantry on my Landius this time because I was figuring they were probably going to be running Green Elwyn because everyone runs Green Elwyn, and Landius is running Heavy Infantry, um, but if we take a look at their Elwyn here, He's only running, I think, level 8 Steel Wing Warriors. So, level 8 Steel Wing Warriors are just not going to hold up against my Landies. Um, they're just not going to have enough DPS to allow Elwyn himself to hit my Landies to get the kill. And that's going to cause him some problems. So, only 733 defense with water conversion on their juggler. Pretty low. Honestly, the magic defense matters more, um, but I'm going to one-shot their juggler here in a second. So, once again, just like last match, this time after failing the one-shot, or after after last game's disaster of not having a game plan after killing off the juggler, um, I learned a little bit this time to make sure that I, I have something in mind before rushing in, and this time I was actually able to move in with Illustriel since this is a good map for her. And somehow I managed to get Illustriel here in my pick ban, as well as my Gerald and Layla. But there's the attack blessing on their Rachel. I had the range to attack their Rachel if I wanted to. The only problem here is that my Illustriel is going to be my main DPS for dealing with Elwyn, since she's the only one who can actually hurt him 
and I know that when I attack Rachel, she's probably going to kill me on the counter-attack, because strong Rachels generally one-shot my Illustrial on the counter if I have to attack them from two range and don't get to use Neutralizing Fire to break their 100% stat boost from Sorceresses. So here I go for the attack on Elwyn. I'm not really doing too much damage, and Tiaris is undoing all my work. But because I attack from here, it, I do have two talent or two mobility from my talent that is unused from my mobility pool, and I'm going to use that to retreat back to my Landius to get in guard range. And Rachel gets a breeze here. Um, and my main goal here is to now, since I can't kill Elwin himself, my main goal here is to kill off the healers and. Rachel, because if I can kill off the healers in Rachel, I can leave Elwyn alone, and if he has no heal support, I can probably wo slowly work him down with my Bone Dinos, and, or not my Bone Dinos, but with my Illustriel, since he can't counter from 2 range. So, in comes Iris, there is their Chloe, now we're going to go ahead and attack their Rachel here from 3 range, just so I can break her Sorceress's 100% HP. Then we're going to go in with my D-Heart to kill off Rachel. We're going to use Onrush here, because we don't want to take any chances that we fail to kill. And Rachel goes down. We're going to now stun their Elwyn, who they have to use a heal on to get rid of the stun on. But... Bring in Landius so that he can guard. They use Frontal Assault here. If they had used Sword Soul, I think that even with these level 8 soldiers, they probably could have killed off my Landius. Because Sword Soul would have stripped my buffs, and a lot of Landius' defense conversion comes, you know, a lot of Landius' defense in general comes from his conversion from his talent. And if they had simply just used Sword Soul, they could have stripped that and or my defense buff and probably would have killed off my Landius. Um, but it only would have been one life, which I guess they were hoping and betting it all on getting both lives in, in one kill with that frontal assault. But here is the heal on Landius. Um, Chloe comes in for an attack. <laughs> She is going to heal all of her damage that she just took back. But I have two heroes that haven't moved. So now I'm doing exactly what I set out to do. I'm going to go ahead and kill off Ill uh, Illustriel. I'm going to kill off their Tiaris with my Illustriel. I have a lot of mobility on my talent to use. And I retreat back here. And now I'm going to attack their Chloe. I didn't expect to get this kill, but somehow I did. Got really lucky here because now it allowed me to go ahead and get one free turn to myself. So, bring my Landius over. We're going to attack their Elwyn from 3 range. And here I didn't realize that my Landius didn't have 1 range guard because of the passive block from Frontal Assault. And they're going to get an attack here on my D-Heart, which is going to kill him off. But again, I have 3 heroes here. They only have 1. Two of them are ranged. One of them has infantry soldiers. As soon as I kill off Elwyn's soldiers, he does not have any way to answer my Landies. And we set up Resplendent Legend. And, well, Iris is going to get the kill, and that is going to be our game. So, I would say that probably the most important thing that I learned from this, this week's Apex is even though I am playing a rushdown team, I still need to have a degree of patience and to actually have a backup plan. Um, I mean, that's pretty straightforward to that you probably should expect to, to plan for those kinds of things, but I was so tunnel visioned on testing out my Gerald and Layla to get the one shots, I really wasn't thinking beyond just getting the one shots. And I think that's kind of what separates me from the top players in Apex is I just I'm not thinking that far ahead I'm I get so tunnel vision on trying to test out one thing that actually winning the battle on top of testing things out is those two just don't really come together for me <laughs> so I really need to learn to be more patient really be willing to let a match 
go a little bit longer than I would like it to and actually be more flexible with my decision making to not be greedy for one which was the problem here with my match against Ozumitsu where I was trying to kill off their um, Sakura and save my D heart to get the follow up or I was trying to kill Sakura with my D heart so I could follow up with my Illustriel and I should not have been so greedy and I should have been a lot more patient with my decisions and I'm hoping that as I experiment more with this more aggressive pick ban phase that I'm hoping to play around with in season three that maybe I'll get a little bit better of uh, an understanding of Apex so that I can perform a little bit better in the playoffs next season assuming that I even make it there but uh, for the moment we're still waiting on Illustrial to get her helm I'm planning to probably temporarily replace my Lifany with Silverwolf uh, at least until I get my Kurama strong enough so that I can field him in my box realistically. And once Kurama is, or once my Hiei hits five stars, he's probably going to replace Kurama. And then I need to find someone to replace young Jessica. Because as much as I like playing around with her in PvE, um, I'm thinking that she's not really holding up too well for me. So I'm thinking I might end up also replacing her or uh, Lifany with my Joshua and Joshua obviously will be an additional faction buffer that for me can cover Estelle who I'm planning to use to replace my um, my Freya as well as an additional faction buffer for my Kurama who I'm planning to replace my um, my young Jessica and or my Lifany so this is probably looking like what my box is going to be a little bit more like in the future. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I want to hang on to Kurama or if I want to replace him with Hiei or, or what. But I'm liking the way that this box is looking at the moment. At least once I get my hero strong enough to actually feel this team. But yeah my my Estelle has really bad enchants she's not really holding up too well you can see here her defense is super low I have okay attack stats rolls but I have pretty bad defense so I need to get some defense rolls on her so that she's actually a viable defensive tank and maybe once that happens then I can replace some of the heroes in here and start running more of a, a time heroes of time and origins box um anyways that's been like a three minute tangent three to five minute tangent of me just talking about my box and what i want to do that is going to be the end of this video i think um i'll probably be doing apex in the next couple a uh, couple weekends streaming so um yeah i'm not sure if i'm going to remember to put my twitch link in the description but um twitch.tv slash keeble the beeble uh check me up there if you're interested in coming by the stream next weekend uh and the weekends after so thanks for watching everyone that's gonna be it for this weekend for apex and uh i'll catch you guys later Bye bye